How's it going everyone? Tucker Lad with Trout's Fly Fishing for our next edition of What's in Your Bag. Uh, I'm headed out for Havana, Cuba tomorrow for six days of fishing down in Kyle Largo. So I thought for this edition of What's in Our Bag, we would do What's in My Boat Bag. And today we'll be featuring the Fish Pond Cut Bank Gear Bag. Uh, great new boat bag, new for 2018. Um, so first, here's everything that I'm going to be taking with me for a day on the flats. I've got a little bit of everything from flies to personal items, rain jacket, camera, so forth. Um, so first, let's go ahead and load everything in the bag, kind of show you how I organize this thing um, and kind of use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Here we go. Nice thing about the, the cut bank gear bag first is this, uh, the, the, the top handle. Um, you know, previous iterations of these bags had handles on either side, you know, something you could Velcro it together. Um, what they've done with this new design is just one strap that can either be a nice handle, uh, handle for the bag or you can extend each of the sides out and then it turns into a nice shoulder carry feature. Uh, we can get into this more later, you know what, when I travel with this bag to and from fishing destinations, I like to also use it as somewhat of a briefcase. Um, so the shoulder strap aspect does make a nice uh, schlepping this thing through the airport. So when you open the bag up, another nice new feature is the lockdown flap. Um, previous iterations of the bag only had one sided pocket here that would kind of just hang loosey goose. Uh, kind of annoying when you're trying to get into the bag. So this nice new Velcro feature, one gives you now a two sided flap. Um, you can organize personal items and accessories, but also keeps it out of the way when the gear bag has been opened up. Um, so my gear bag, when I'm going fishing, I've actually removed the one of the center flaps. There's another one of these flaps right here that I take out, and then another one of the little uh, uh, accessory pockets here that I take out as well, and I'll show you why here. Um, but the first thing we're gonna throw in there, which is fly boxes. Um, so for where we're going in Cuba, Cayo Largo, it's a Grand Slam destination, so we're gonna be fishing for bonefish, permits, snook, um, tarpon as well as a variety of blue water species. So flies are you know, very necessary in a, a wide variety. So first we got my tarpon box, nice little the mini clip boxes. You can also get these things from Umpqua Feather Merchants and others now, really nice size for flats. Um, previously I would always put the, the boxes in vertically like this. You can see um, with this new design change, I think this is probably, I would consider it a little bit of a flaw. Hopefully it's something they'll address in, in maybe future iterations, but the bag probably needs to be another inch higher just so that you can put those, those little suitcase boxes into the bag and allow the bag to close nicely. As you can see, with that flap down, if I had anything packed in here, the bag wasn't gonna close very nicely. So what I figured out I can do instead this year for this trip is now instead of putting the boxes in vertically, put the boxes in uh, horizontally, just like so. Um, I've measured it out and when you, when you put the three boxes in, so I've got crabs here and then bonefish, blue water box goes into my day pack, which normally goes in the hole of the boat. Um, a lot of other items there, water, things of that sort. But you can see when the box is going like that, it's about the same amount of real estate that it takes up if I are able to change the boxes and putting them in horizontally. Now, one thing to note that I figured out on this is you can see how the clip boxes can kind of clip nicely together, which makes them stack and organize. When you're putting them in, you actually want to reverse these just so that you're not the, the boxes are going to slide out very easily. If you put them in there, they're, they're going to get locked up and I was finding the boxes a little bit tough to slide out. So kind of alternate the boxes in, but you can get three of these boxes into the, into the bag very nicely, nicely organized. I've gone written each of the species on top. So whether I'm reaching in there, or my guide or my boatmate, really easy to figure out everything I'm going to need. So, from there, I'm gonna pack the box, the, the rest of the boat back kind of based on necessity. Obviously, things I don't think I'm gonna need, put further down. Things I'm gonna need on a daily basis, put them further up. Um, so for leader and tippet and so forth, um, I've got the, the large headgate tippet holder from Fish Pond. They've got a smaller one that's for trout size tippets. This one's for big saltwater sizes. You can see I've got, uh, what is it, 16 through 50 pound um, fluorocarbon is stacked up on this bad boy here. So we're gonna clip that right to the front. Um, previously, you know, I did put you know, my tippets into the boat bag. I do like this feature now. It's a little bit, you know, can kind of bang around the boat a little bit, but it's a lot of bulk and gear that is now outside of my boat bag, all easily accessible for either me or anyone else who needs to use it. Um, from there, I'm going to put my rain jacket. Obviously, if it's, it looks like a rainy day, I'll put this, you know, closer to the top. Let's just assume that it's looking like it's going to be a pretty nice day, but may need it for, for run. So I'm going to kind of put that towards the bottom here. Additionally, I always like to carry a first aid kit with me. Um, you know, normally if you're down in say like the Florida Keys, fishing around Louisiana, the Carolinas, Texas, most likely the guide will have some sort of first aid kit, something on some sort of option like that on the boat. Um, down in places like Cuba, probably not. So in case something happens, always good to have a little bit of something there just in case. 
Um, tool pouch, variety of different little tools, nice little topo design pack we sell here at Trout's, all locally made here in Denver, Colorado. This is just extra nippers, things like that, just in case, slide that down right on the side there. Um, personal items, pliers, as well as my able uh, nippers. These are gonna be on my person, but just showing kind of what would be, um, you know, going into the boat bag, so to speak. Um, from there, I've got some extra tippet, I've got shock tippets. I like to load all of this stuff up on top of the bag. Just nice, easy to organize it kind of out of the way, but you can see very easily what you've got. So I'm taking 10 pound through 60 pound fluorocarbon. I've got some shock tippet, I've got wire tippet for barracuda. So really kind of trying to be ready for a little bit of everything. Um, leaders, what I've done this year, uh, previously I would just take a whole, you know, take six packs of leaders down with me. Well, in an effort to try to minimize plastic, what I've done this year, and you can see if I made point it close, I've taken all of the leaders out of each individual sleeve and then packaged them each into one. So this is six, nine foot, eight pound fluorocarbon leaders in one plastic pouch. Um, you know, I can recycle this stuff here in Denver, probably not gonna get recycled down in Cuba, probably gonna end up in the ocean. So kind of in that, you know, Costa kick plastic effort, we're gonna try to minimize the amount of plastic I'm taking down. So I've got a variety of different leaders, uh, eight through 20 pound fluorocarbon. I've got a bunch of different um, small shock tip styles for snook and other things. And then a lot of the tipping materials here so I can build my own tarpon leaders and barracuda leaders. So I'm gonna slide that down in there, probably not gonna need that too much throughout the course of the day. On the opposite side here, we'll put some of the tools, pocket knife, able knife, hopefully they'll start making these again sometime soon. That goes on my person as well. Um, we've got a hatch knot tire. When you're dealing with shock tippets, wire tippets, you know, this is kind of seems like a little bit of overkill, but when, you, when you're tying knots and you don't want to cut up your hands, this thing comes in real useful. So we'll throw that in there. Um, sunglass cleaning. Um, little trick that I like to do, paper towels or paper napkins. Um, you can get these normally wherever you're getting breakfast in the morning, at your hotel, house where you're staying. Trick here is that after you're running, your sunglasses get all dirty. Um, instead of using your chamois cloth, what you want to do is pour a little bit of cold water on your sunglasses. Um, then you go ahead and dry them off and clean them with the paper towel, pulls all the salt, gets them nice and clean, and then you can do a little chamois treatment to them to get them fully cleaned up. So we've also got some sunscreen, salt and stone, great natural stuff we sell here at Trouts as well, lip balm, face sunscreen, stripping guards. I don't normally wear them, but man, when your hands get all cut up, it's a great thing to have kind of as a, as a band-aid fix, so to speak. Um, a little bit of extra leaders we'll just throw up in that area. Shut that down. So as you can see here, all of that tippet, accessories, everything on the top of the pack, still can close it very easily there. A um, couple last items here, camera. Extra pair of sunglasses. These are low light uh, lenses from Costa Del Mar. Um, really nice to have either on cloudy days where you're searching for tails or during the early morning hours where you're say looking for rolling tarpon. Really makes a big difference from your, you know, the normal pair of sunglasses that I'm normally going to be wearing. So throw those in there. And there we go. So pretty full. You know, there's probably some things in there that I could take out, but at least, you know, I want to show you guys that you can fit that much gear into this, this cut bank gear bag from Fish Pond. It's a really great boat bag. Um, the other nice feature of this bag, you know, from a travel perspective, is assuming that you know I didn't have my tippet spool on there. This bag fits perfectly underneath any airplane seat and over any in any air uh, overhead compartment of airplanes you're going to be traveling on. Other bags I've traveled with from competing companies, they don't fit underneath the seat in front of you, and many times they don't fit in the overhead compartment, which means you're going to be gate checking your bag. And when you're trying to keep all your super valuable stuff close to you, you know being in the belly of the airplane isn't exactly where I want my stuff to be. Um, so lastly, I've got my. Fish pond koozie here, just for those uh, nice cold beverages out on the boat. But here's the cup bank gear bag, ready to go fishing for a day on the Cuban flats.